Are you ready to hustle? I need to hustle, hustle. Welcome to The Hustle with Justin Harrison, the ultimate podcast for money, motivation, and inspiration. In this season of The Hustle, we're focusing in on small businesses, including side hustles, turning side hustles into main hustles, and everything around entrepreneurship. And today, I'm joined by James all the way from Pretoria. James, you got some questions for me. Let's jump right in. Yes, Justin, uh, we've gr- had some rough rides uh, recently. I've been retrenched from my job. And um, yeah, so we've sitting with uh, a lot of options and situations like, you know, should we sell the house? Should we be renting, buying equity rather? And what should we do in our financial situation? So my question is, what are the best steps to take when you are retrenched? So look, I mean, this comes back down to personal finance 101, and it's the same advice I give probably every day on radio, every day on TV, every day on social media, which is you have to minimize your expenses, right? So if this is this is especially true when you're in a situation where you're not earning income, right? So if you're earning income, you have to spend less than you earn. But you know, if you're not earning and you've in your situation where you've been retrenched, you have to understand that there's going to be a period of readjustment until you get back to earning parity. And so you have to do everything within your power to minimize the expenses. And this is an uncomfortable truth that not a lot of people want to face up to. People try and hang on to things too long. And what happens is they land up digging a bigger hole for themselves, especially in a high inflationary environment like we are now. It's going to become harder to sell property. It's going to become harder to settle loans. So it is absolutely important that you take a long, hard look at your personal finances, break down what your expenses are and see where you can cut dramatically. I would definitely consider selling your home and moving into something more affordable. The statistics are very clear on home ownership in the country. Most people are only utilizing 40% of the space that they own, which means that we're essentially paying and covering expenses for 60% that we don't use. Now, that's all good and well when you're earning and you're happy and everything's going well and you can say, well, that's a luxury I'm affording. But in your case, this is no longer a luxury. This is a necessity. And you have to take the steps as quickly as possible because as much as you want to get to earning, and this is the same mistake everybody makes in personal finance, right? People focus on let me get to the earning, but they're not focusing on what they can control right now, which is the net outflow of cash. So you've got to do everything possible. Cancel the DSTV, you know, get rid of the gym membership, cut down on the unnecessary vehicle repayments, go down to one car if need be, go down to the smallest car if possible need be, get rid of your house. Don't be sentimental. This is not a time to exercise sentiment. This is a time to exercise logic. And the logic you know is deep within you already. The reason why you're asking the question is because you actually want me to professionally remind you of what you already know. And you've got to stem those net outflows of cash. True. Thank you, Justin. So second question, I guess, right? If you're in my situation, will you complete your last three subjects uh, to become a full SEMA? Because I'm a qualified SIPA, I've got SEMA managerial, which is quite far, BCom accounting and lots of experience and went up to CFO level. But will you complete those last three strategic su- subjects or will you rather focus on an online business? For right. instance, e affiliate marketing, content creation, passive income, etc. And just to say, I've not read your book yet of passive income. I've only started with the first one, Money Secret. So my answer would be both, right? And, and here is why. First of all, you need to understand that in order to increase your potential to earn, you need to maximize your skill set. If you were to start a business tomorrow, it is going to take you a, a, a lengthy period of time to get to a point where you are able to earn enough money, draw enough money out of a business, and then obviously be able to leave some money in the business to grow the business. Because this is what people don't understand about entrepreneurship. If you make 100000 a month, in a business. That 100,000 is not yours, right? It may be 100,000 net profit, but you've got to leave something in the business. And my rule for business is you've got to reinvest 60% of net profit. So what we do in our businesses, if we make 100 grand, for example, 60 grand gets reinvested back into growing the business. 40 grand is what we have to cover expenses, salaries, everything out of. So 60, 40 rule, right? Now, the reason why I'm saying this is you need to understand that it's probably going to take you a decent run of time to get to a point where you're earning enough income to sustain yourself. So it goes without saying that don't abandon what you're good at. Don't abandon the skill set that you've acquired. Don't abandon the experience that you've acquired. 
I would go and definitely top up on those skill sets. So if that means completing a degree, if that means, you know, maybe going and studying a little bit further, I would definitely do it. The only thing I would say to you is figure out how you can do it quicker. Is there a way that maybe you can get extra credits? Is there a way that maybe you can do it through an online system? Look at all the options out there and see how quickly you can get it done. Don't necessarily say, well, because I've been told it's three years, I've got to do three years. Maybe you can do the three years in, in one and a half years, right? And the example I always I always give people when it comes to these situations is your position is very different from somebody who's comfortable. Somebody who's earning a salary and is thinking about upskilling themselves is completely different to when you're in a in a fight or flight mode. And you're in fight or flight mode. When you've been retrenched, you've now got to figure out how to get to the money. So for your situation, I would say do both, right? And you go, well, I don't have enough time. Listen, if you're hungry and if you're starving and if you're out in the cold, you do whatever it takes to survive. So get that top up on your skill set that will make sure that you increase your ability to earn income. And you might actually find that you, if not follow that through as a business, if not follow that through as some kind of consulting gig, if not follow through on doing it as a job, it is still going to provide value in whatever else you do, right? And it's probably going to take you some time to start a business, to get something going. You probably need to start as a little bit of a side hustle, grow it up eventually over time. And that means you're going to have to go and seek formal employment for a while. And this is what people don't want to hear, right? When I started my first business at 13, I had the benefit of being at boarding school. So I had, I had zero expenses. So I could save 100% of what I earned. When I became homeless and then you know, started earning money again. I was making $10,000 a month, but only spending 800 a month to live because I understood the thing that kept me off the street was money. So you've got to focus on how do I get money today? How do I start earning today? And if that means taking a crappy job whilst you build up a business, so be it. Those sacrifices are going to be worth it down the line. Just be prepared to be uncomfortable. Absolutely. Thank you, Justin. So third and final one is... Um... I have a lot of, uh, or I have a few interests and talents and I'm working through a few options to create some work from home business, but I'm just struggling to figure out which one to take action with. Um, you know, would it be affiliate marketing, e-commerce, drop shipping, uh, YouTubing? And uh, I know it, 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 it depends on, the, on, on a lot of wisdom and so on, but I just need your inputs just to give some guidance regarding that. Yeah, so that's that's a really deep one to unpack because, you know, obviously people, first of all, are trying to steer people away from their interests. You know, we, we've been told, do what you're interested in. That's a load of hogwash, right? You got to do what makes money. You got to do what makes money. You can like anything if it makes enough money, actually. So, you know, this whole thing of follow your passions, follow your dreams, it, it's horseshit, right? You need to focus in on how do I get to the money, right? What is making money? So, in asking yourself that question, the next part of the question is, what am I good at that other people will find value in? What can I provide that people will give me money for? What can I do in the world that solves a problem, right? So let's go to e-commerce. Let's go to drop shipping. Let's go to affiliate marketing, right? All of these are what I like to refer to as opportunistic opportunities, right? They're not building anything long-term and sustainable. You're selling somebody else's products. You, you're basically in arbitrage and whatever's trending today, you've got to keep up with whatever's trending tomorrow. You're not building a long-term sustainable business. And the problem is most people look for opportunities rather than looking for sustainability. If you want to build anything, and this is the way I look at your situation, you've got a blank sheet of paper. I have been where you are today, but in a much worse situation. I had no roof over my head. I was on the street, homeless, eating out of dumpsters, right? And I sat down with a blank piece of paper and I said, this is my opportunity to start again. What did I do wrong previously and what can I do right today? So I can answer your question what you did wrong immediately, right? You got retrenched. It's, so you can go, well, that's not my fault. But, but, and I tell people this all the time, being employed is the biggest risk of all because at the end of the day, you're completely reliant on the business managing its money well, the directors and the, and the shareholders doing the right thing. And you're taking home a monthly salary thinking I've got consistency. No, you don't. You've got risk. So what you did wrong is that over the last 20 years of your life, you weren't figuring out how to get your own money. You weren't figuring out how to become sovereign and independent. And so the lesson here is fix that problem. You've got to have multiple forms of income. 
if you do go back into formal employment, you've got to figure out how to build up something on the side. You've got to figure out how to generate passive income. You've got to figure out how to do small businesses that are going to bring you income. People ask me why I started 109 businesses. I'll tell you why. Because it's about diversity. If one business does really bad during winter, I want another business that in winter does really well. I didn't start 109 businesses because I'm a megalomaniac. I started it for diversification. And so what you don't have is diversification. And that's why you're in the, in the seat that you're in. So it's a great lesson. Take a blank piece of paper and focus on that. So coming back to which businesses to start. First of all, focus on the skill set that you have. Secondly, if everybody's talking about it in the market, it's probably too late. If you're hearing job shipping on every social media feed, you know it's too late. If you're hearing about crypto on social media, it's too late. If you're hearing about affiliate marketing on social media, it's too late. The point is you've got to get into something where there is money, but it is not saturated. You've got to get into something that you have a skill set because you don't want to go into something that you have no skill set around because you're not going to have to learn that skill set and learn how to run a business because you haven't run a business up until this point, I'm assuming. And so here's the thing. Running a business is completely different to what most people think is. And I talk a lot about entrepreneurship being a selfless act. As an entrepreneur, when you start a business, you have to be prepared not to earn out of that business for at least five years. And nobody wants to hear this. Nobody wants to hear this. So if you can't carry yourself for five years, business shouldn't be the direction you're going in. It should be something you you plan to do, something you work on, something you create, but you've got to get in a primary source of income. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Justin. Really appreciate it. It's my absolute pleasure. And and listen, my last piece of advice to you on the subject is understand that uh, you know, when you get retrenched, it's an it's a new opportunity. It's a chance to undo the mistakes. It's a chance to see what you haven't seen. And uh, this is a universe pointing you in a direction and you just have to pay very close attention. But remember, keep your mind on the money. 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 If you found value from this episode of The Hustle, be sure to leave us a rating and a review on your favorite podcasting app. And while you're there, be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button depending on your platform. And remember, hustle makes muscle. Stay motivated by The Hustle. Talkers talk, but hustlers hustle. Find more episodes at ecr.co.za or your favorite podcast app.